life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down, as if we could somehow will it to go away. Or we think we can go toe to toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable. But when they appear, we have a protector. A savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. Amen. How many believe that this morning? This morning I want to talk to you about the storms of life. And one thing you'll know about me as you get to know me, I'm going to be as real and as transparent as I can be. And some of you know what's going on in my life. Man, I've hit storm after storm after storm the moment I came to this place. Um, so we're going to talk about storms. Because I know that I'm not the only one. And I want to show to you, and I want to explain to you why I keep going, why I persevere, why I don't quit. Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 35. It says, if you got a cool Bible like mine, the title is Jesus Calms the Storm. Oh, that, that's, that's enough right there, huh? Jesus Calms the Storm. Amen. Verse 35 says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall, that's a good word, huh? Furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still, or in some version it says, Peace, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. We'll stop right there. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your word. I pray that you speak to us this morning, not my words, but yours. I pray that I decrease, Lord, as you increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to your sight. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We go through storms. How many understand that this morning? That we go through storms. Let me tell you something. Um. Now, some of these storms, 
we created. Let's be honest. Some of these storms we've created, just like Jonah, in our disobedience. Come on. But you know what? Some of these are attacks from that lying devil. And then there's some that God uses to strengthen and mature us. The testing of your faith develops perseverance, the Bible says. Right? I had a lady tell me one time, uh, so pastor, I need to get back to church. I love church. I miss it. I just love being in God's house. But I want to tell you, and I want you to know that I won't be here every Sunday. And I'm not going to get that involved. So just forewarning you. I said, okay. I kind of looked at her like, You don't make sense. And so she explained it to me. She says, listen, every time I come back to God and I start attending church and I I just get fully involved, Satan starts attacking me and my family. How many can relate? You know, and so I, I, I said, so you are going to appease the devil. She said, that's not what I'm saying. I said, that's exactly what you're saying, sister. You're just going to come to church, but you don't want to get the devil mad. So who are you serving? The Bible says that in this world, we're going to have trouble. Not that we might. That's a slight possibility. We know that, right? In this life, we're going to have trouble. But all of a sudden, we have trouble and we freak out like the disciples. John 16, 33, that's, that's where that scripture is. In this life uh, or in this world, we are going to have troubles. But, the, but it goes on to say, but take heart. This is Jesus talking. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I'm here to tell you this morning that we're going to go through the storms of life. But I would rather have Jesus in my boat. As I go through this storm. I would rather have Jesus in my boat. Than be in another boat trying to run from him. Come on, and get thrown overboard, and get swallowed up. Let me tell you something. I haven't been in the belly of a fish, but I've been in the belly of a fish. You know? My first point is this. Um, We all go through the storms of life. I don't think you heard me this morning. It says we all go through the storms of life. We all go through the storms of life. Now, Now, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I know you guys haven't heard this scripture, but but. Stick with me here. I'm going to teach you something new. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Oh, I need my soul restored. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Here we go. Yea, though I walk and... Yea, though I... Set up my camp and I live in the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I, 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 I get a motel room in the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I, I, I just, you know, hang out and, 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 and just 
get a change of address in the, in the valley of the shadow of death. You know, the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, and, and some of us, we, we put up the change of address because we think that's where we belong because we're Christians now. We got to be in the valley of the shadow of death. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The valley of the shadow of death is not your destination. It's not where, 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 where God wants you, but he's going to take you through it. There's too many Christians that think that this is where we're at now. This is my life. You are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. There's a victorious life that we need to start living. But in order to to start living that victorious life, we got to get through the valley of the shadow of death. We got to get through the storms of life. That's very important. I will fear no evil. I am not going to compromise. Though Satan may come in to, to, to kill, steal, and destroy, there's no compromise because I will fear no evil because he's with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Oh, that's good stuff right there. I don't pick up an offering for myself. (laughs) Woo! You understand that? We got to go through it. And it's not a negative. Oh, man, I'm going through it. You should be, I'm going through it. You know what I'm saying? Do you you get that? You know, people say, I'm just, I'm going through it. Let me tell you something. I'm going through it, but I'm going through it. Amen? Some of you, you're, you're going through it. But take heart because you're going through it. Whew. You look at it, it's the same words, but it's a totally different concept. I'm going to say that again. Because some of you are saying, I'm going through it. I'm going through it. But you should be. Thou, O Lord, is a shield about me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. I'm going through it. That's not my home. I'm going through it. My second point is this. We need to trust in Jesus. Verse 35, I'm going to read that again. Because there's something that the disciples missed. And I think there's something that a lot of us miss in in, in verse 35. Jesus is speaking some words to them. He's being prophetic. So let's read this again. Slowly. Some of us need it to read slowly. I ain't pointing out fingers, but it's all right. We'll wait for you. <laughs> Says that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, what did he say to his disciples? He said, let's go over to the other side. Let me tell you something this morning. When God says you're going over to the other side, you're going over to the other side. You understand that? Disciples didn't trust it and didn't believe it. Their focus was on the storm. They had fear. They had doubt. But they forgot what Jesus told them at the beginning. Guys, we're going over to the other side. And Jesus is telling you this morning, I'm taking you through it. You're going to get to the other side. And some of us need to realize and receive it that we're going to make it to the other side. We got to trust in Jesus. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. I should write a song about that. Make a million dollars. All the young people, all the old people are laughing. 
all the young people are like, that's a good idea. <laughs> Trust and obey, for there's no other way. It's a story that says one night a house caught fire and a young boy was forced to flee to the roof. The father got forced out on the ground floor. And he stood on the ground below with outstretched arms calling to his son as the, as the, the flames were engulfing the house and there was fire and there was smoke. And the father stood on the ground and he said, jump, I'll catch you. He knew the boy had to jump to save his life. And all the boy could see was just flames and smoke and darkness. As can be imagined, he was afraid to leave the roof. And his father kept yelling in desperation, jump, I'll catch you, jump, I'll catch you. But the boy protested and he said, daddy, I can't see you. I can't see you. And the father replied, oh, but I can see you. And that's all that matters. In our desperation, as we're going through the storms of life, we, sometimes we just can't see God. Sometimes we don't feel God. Let's be honest. And we cry out in desperation like this little boy. God, I can't see you. Daddy, I can't see you. I can't see you. I can't feel you. All I see are storms. All I see are waves. All I see is just my life in despair. But I believe that God is responding to you in the same way that his the dad responded to his son. Doesn't matter if, I can, if you can see me. I see you. Come on. Come into my arms. We need to trust. We need to trust in Jesus. Trust in the Lord. I'm giving you guys some really obscure scriptures this morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You may not see him. You don't know how it's going to happen. But it's not about your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will make your path straight. We got to trust the Lord. You may not understand it. You know, these songs walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. Oh, man. When I first heard that, I was, I, I was like, yes. Man, I've been there. God tells you, this is where you need to do. This is what you need to go. You need to go to Patterson. Do what I tell you. Watch around those walls, and you're just doing what God tells you. And you're like, What in the world is happening? Walls should be crashing down by now. But you know what? He's never failed me yet. 
and you've been going through some stuff, and, and you think, well, well, I prayed, and I did this, and, 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 and I'm faithful, God, and, I, you, know, and you, start, you start making this list you know, of, 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 of all the right things, and that's all right. But let me tell you something. God has not failed you. It may come in the midnight hour. Right? Paul and Silas, you remember this story? Every time I think of this story, I think of Fred Hammond. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All right, all right, all right. Late in the midnight hour. And at midnight, Paul and Silas were nursing their wounds, were licking their wounds and saying, Lord, woe is me. No, the Bible says that they were worshiping God. They were beat up. They were falsely accused. They were, they, they were just in prison. The Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas were worshiping God. You got to trust God. And when you don't know what to do, you just worship. And you say, thank you, Lord. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to thank you. Because it's not my job to know how. It's just my job to walk through. Thank you, Jesus. Number three. Peace, be still. We got so much anxiety going on. We talked about this last week. Some of us, man, your brain, your, 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 your thoughts are, go a mile a minute when you lay down. You worry about this morning. You worry about last night. You worry about, you know, Things that happen, things that haven't happened, things that might not even happen, but you're still worried about it. Huh. Sometimes these storms happen around us, happen to us, but sometimes these storms happen in us. Sometimes these storms happen in us. You ever get to the point that you can't even lay down? You can't even sleep? You know, my daughter, um, most of you know this, but last week, it seems like weeks ago, but last week, we went out to eat and her water broke. Now she's two months away from her due date. And she's a tiny little thing. She's 20, but you know, she looks 14, if that. And um, my wife ended up taking her to the emergency room last, uh, last Sunday night. They admitted her. Um, they said, we're going to try to just hang on. We're just going to try to hold on. And the three of us didn't sleep. Asia's in the emergency room. Anna is in the parking lot because she can't go in. And I'm at home worried about both of them. And that anxiety just comes up. And you don't know when you hear all these things. She's two months away from her due date. She's tiny. She's little. 
and all of a sudden they admit her. And you want a good report. You want, hey, everything's okay. Go back. Right? And they admit her into the hospital, and they said, nope, you're going to be here till you have this baby. It might be two days. It might be two weeks. But we want to tell you this, that as soon as this baby's delivered, it's going straight to the NICU. And it's going to be there for a while. And that anxiety just comes up. And, you're, and, and there's, there's a party that says, you're a man of God, you're a man of prayer. And, 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 and I feel like that, that guy in the Bible that tells Jesus, Jesus, I believe. You know this story? I believe, but help my unbelief. And I believe that sometimes, and, and, and I could be wrong, but this is how I interpret this. Lord, I believe that you can heal. I've seen you do it, and you'll do it again. And man, if your family's sick, if you're sick, man, you give me a call. You come to the altar, man, we'll pray for you. And I'll pray with all authority, and I'll grab this anointing oil, and I know what to do with it. Because greater is he that is in me. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is a doctor of doctors. He's a great physician. And you come to this altar, and man, I will pray for you. But you mess with my daughter, and all of a sudden it's like, whoa. Huh. Or you get sick. You get sick and you're feeling it. And I'm not crying out to Jesus no more. I'm crying out to Anna. Anna, get the medicine. And we got more faith in NyQuil than we do in Jesus. Pick up your feet, man. I'm stepping on some toes. But amen? Amen. Hey, I believe, and that, that's, and, and, and I, I'm, not, I'm not getting down on you or anything like that, but I, I think this is where, where this guy was. I believe God, but help my unbelief. I want to believe. I so bad want to believe, but you got to help me because this is, this is hitting home. This is tough. Ann and I were talking about um, my son Jericho we have a boy we have a girl and that's what we call him we talk about the boy the boy the boy this the boy that the girl this the girl that you know we don't want to get too attached to them <laughs> not, not yet anyway um, but Jericho we lived in a two-story house one time, and he took off, he disassembled his skateboard, made it all flat, and then got on it and would go down the stairs. He's the one that jumps off the roof with the trash bag, you know. Um, always playing sports, played football, basketball, wrestled, ran track and cross country. He's a two-time state champion in cross, track and cross country. You know, sub 430 mile, um, sub 15 5K. Um, if you don't know, that's fast. That's fast. Um, he ran like 430 in, in a mile. Um, and uh, played baseball. Um, did all of it. Never got hurt. And if he did, he just got up, shook it off. Rub some dirt on it like his dad taught him. And my, he's all boy. Asia is all girl. Prissy. Didn't want, I made her join cross, I, was, I coached cross country, and I made her join cross country. And my kids were the bookends. My son would come in first, and my daughter would come in dead last. 
But that's the way she wanted it. And I caught on to her game because she would get to the starting line and they would shoot the gun and then she would just kind of jog and then look for the slowest girl. She'd find the slowest girl and then she'd just run up to them, introduce herself, and make a friend. I'm like, Asia. That's just the way she was. And then, never forget this day. It was the Friday before her, the, her first day of first grade. She was with the babysitter, and we bought her um, a pair of Heelys. You all remember Heelys? Got wheels in them, skate shoes. Um, and so the babysitter took her to a parking lot so that she could skate. And a freak accident happened. A rock got caught in her wheel, and it just stopped her all of a sudden, and it snapped her femur. And when she fell, her foot came up around and kicked her in the back of the head before she hit the ground. The babysitter's kids ran to my job and told me that Asia broke her leg. So I left work. Anna was working like three hours away, four hours away. And so I went to where she was at, and there's this big, it wasn't protruding, but she just had this big thing on her leg. And, uh, and if you think Asia's small then, you should have seen her at six years old. Okay, she looked like three, four years old. Um, and so I picked her up, and she's like, Dad, it's moving. And I, I just had to slowly just take her in the car, and I took her to the hospital. They did an x-ray, and her femur was like this. Okay, and if you know about the femur, it's like the strongest bone in the body. And so they had to traction her. And this is dad watching all of this, okay? This is his baby girl. And the doctors, the... Um, EMTs, the, 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 all these guys um, came in, nurses, and one held her head, one held her arm, one held the other arm, one held one leg, a nurse held me, <laughs> um, and seriously, she was like, they're about to do something but it's going to be okay. And so she was there to make sure I didn't like freak out and go punch a doctor. <laughs> um, and they grabbed her leg and they said, all right, ready? One, two, three. And they just pulled. And they, because her bone was like this, they pulled to set it. They x-rayed it real quick. They says, we got it. They wrapped her, and they put her and I on the plane, and we flew to Denver to a trauma hospital. I left my son by himself. My wife was four hours away. If my daughter was six, my son was 10. I was like, dude, I'll see you later. <laughs> You're on your own. You're 10. And as mom will be, just stick around. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> just mom will be here in a little bit. And uh, her and I hopped a plane. And uh, a team was waiting for us at the airport, took us in. And let me tell you this. I didn't tell you this.
we were about to switch insurances. And I don't know if you know about insurances, there's a time that you can stop your insurance, but there's a time that you, have to, that you have to start. Well, there was a month gap that we were gonna stop her insurance and go to my insurance, because my insurance was better. And guess what happens in that month? And so they're asking for insurance cards, and, and I'm pulling out my wallet, and I'm giving them the insurance card. And I'm in church, but they're like, everything all right? I was like, yeah, here you go. I was like, sue me later, but, <laughs> but fix my daughter. You know what I'm saying? The plane ride alone was $40,000. And, uh, and so I'm signing stuff. And I'm like, I don't care. Arrest me. Send me to jail, I, you know, I, it doesn't matter. Why? I just fix my daughter. When you go through these storms of life, anybody knows, I mean, can you relate to this stuff? And then you, all you have to do is just hold on to God. Anna and Jericho finally, Anna came, just came real quick, picked up Jericho, grabbed some clothes, and, and they, so it was like three hours from where she was at to home, picked up Jericho, and then four hours to Denver. And um, they were going to operate on her, I don't know, like 10 o'clock at night, something like that. And... Uh, so my parents live in Denver, and there was some family people. So it was pre-COVID, so there was a bunch of people. You know, remember those times, the good old days? <laughs> so, you know, we just had a bunch of family there, and you see your broken six-year-old daughter strapped in. She can't move because they don't want her to move her legs, so she's just strapped in, can't do anything. And to see her just broken, it just tears you up. And you can't do nothing about it. My son, he's, he's got a big heart. And he was just, he was tore up. And to see his little sister, I, since, since the beginning, even before she was even born, I said, listen, man, you're going to get a little sister. And that's your responsibility. You take care of her. Don't let nothing happen to her. You're her big brother. You will always be her big brother, and you take care of her. I do that for my brother, even though my baby brother is a head taller than me. But that's still my baby brother. And I may be 50, and he may be 45. That's still my brother, and that's still my responsibility, and I'll still take care of him. And I passed that on to my son, and I said, listen, that's your responsibility. You take care of her. And you could see the anguish in his face. And there's people there, you know, um, I come from a long line of pastors, so people are praying for her, and, 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 and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're just trusting in God. People are talking, we're just waiting for the doctor to come in and, and, and the surgeon to come in and do the operation. Everything's ready to go. And all of a sudden, Asia just stops everything, and she says, Jay. She calls him Jay. His name is Jericho Jordan, so my family calls him JJ. She made that, she even shortened it more, and she just calls him Jay. She's like, Jay. She's like, come here. She can't move. She says, come here. And so he walks over to her, and he, he says, come here. And she grabs him, and she hugs him, and she says, don't worry, Jay. I'll be okay. And that tore me up. <laughs> that tore up everybody. We don't want our kids to go through this stuff. And Anna and I were remembering this story. 
they didn't cast her. They, they put pins and rods in her, and they gave her a walker. And I, I felt the way special parents of, of special needs kids felt. I, I got, now I ain't saying I'm, I'm totally, because she got better. You know, special needs kids, they don't get better, you know. But we, we, we found, she, the walker was seriously this big. And, and she had to use a walker for months, I guess. And, um, and people would just look at us like, you know. Ann and I were remembering this. Like, man, this girl, for being prissy, she just doesn't do things normal. She takes us through this stuff, you know. My son is going through, um, the Marine Corps has martial, its own martial arts, and he's training right now. He's in his last week of, of becoming a martial arts instructor for the Marine Corps. And he calls me up, and he's like, Dad, I just got beat up. He's like, this, it's, it's, a, it's three weeks of, of just getting beat up. You know, they just tear you up. He says, I think I pulled a muscle. He says, but I'm not going to tell nobody because I am not going to go two and a half weeks and not finish. He's like, after I finish, I'll go to medical. And my advice to him was, well, suck it up. Just, just do it. Get it done. I was, he's like, I got beat up. I was like, do you, that's all you call me. You tell me, I got beat up. I got it beat up. Do you, do you do any beating up? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, be positive about it. Tell me who you beat up. <laughs> but your baby girl's a little bit different, huh? And... But we got stories about my son. You'll hear those later. But um, when you go through these storms of life and you see your little girl broken and you know she may be 20 years old but I still see that six-year-old daughter in that hospital bed and it hurts the same because you can't do anything about it except cry out to Jesus. And sometimes we say the dumbest things like the disciples, Lord, don't you even care? Don't you care what's going on in my life? Let me tell you something, Jesus cares. And I'm here to tell you that he cares. And not only that he cares, but he's going to get you through it. He promised you a long time ago, you're going to get over to the other side. And I'm here to tell you, no matter what you're going through this morning, you're going to get to the other side. Amen. The storm is not going to destroy you. It's not going to, you know, when God is going to protect you, he's going to protect you and your family. David said, I, I was young and now I'm old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. In other words, I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to take care of your kids. Amen. And this morning, I think somebody needs to hear that. Because maybe you've given up on yourself. Maybe you've given up on your kids. But God promised you, you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. You hear me this morning? You're going to get through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. God didn't say, that's your destination. That's, that's, the, that, that's where you belong. That lying devil will tell you that. 
This is what you're worth. You need to live in despair. You need to live in, in, in desperation. You're a Christian. You, can't, you, you don't get all that good stuff. But the Bible says, yea, though I walk through that, because God has something better for me. I got to go through it, but he's with me. You got to go through it, but he's with you. Let me tell you something why after all of this, and there's all kinds of other storms that I'm going through right now. It's, it's been a crazy time coming to Patterson. One of these days, I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you. But what keeps me coming Sunday after Sunday? What keeps me just waking up and saying, thank you, Lord? Because I'm going through it. Though the enemy may try to come in. And I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus. Because there's, if the enemy knows something, if he knows, you know, he's not dumb. He's trying to keep me. He's trying to distract me. He's trying to keep me from, from getting to that place. And if there's this much opposition, I want to get to the other side. This morning, and I'm, I'm done, I'm done. But this morning, if you are going through a storm, I want to encourage you. And I'm not telling you this, you know, uh, uh, just as your pastor, I'm telling you this as somebody who's in the same boat. You hold fast, you cry out to Jesus because you're going to get through it. Jesus promised you that you're getting to the other side. And guess what? You're getting to the other side. Come hell or high water. If you're going through this storm, I want to pray for you this morning. Bow your heads, close your eyes, let's pray. Father God, Lord, I know that I'm not the only one going through these storms. Because in this life, we are going to have problems. We're going to have difficulties. We're going to have storms. And Lord, there are people here this morning that are going through some storms that, that, that would just shock other people. And I pray that these words, words encourage them. That these scriptures encourage them. That this... That, 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 this passage of scripture will encourage them. The storm wasn't meant to kill you. But the storm was meant to strengthen you. To make you realize where your strength come from, comes from. Where your focus should be. It should be on the one who can calm the wind and the waves. Lord, speak peace into my storm. I know I got to go through it, but speak peace into my storm. Lord, the devil knows where to attack. He'll attack us where it hurts the most. In our finances, with our family, our pride. Whatever the case may be. Lord, and I just pray right now that they would hold fast to you. That they would call out your name. Be with them, God. Something great and mighty is about to take place. Something great is waiting for us on the other side. I've seen you move. You've moved the mountains.
You moved the mountains in the Old Testament, Father God. You moved the mountains in the New Testament. You moved the mountains for my grandfather. You moved the mountains for my dad. And Father God, you continue to move the mountains for me. And you know what? You will move the mountains for my children. You will move the mountains in Patterson. You will move the mountains in Family Christian Center. You will move the mountains for my brothers and my sisters. You will move the mountains for my family, my church family. I've seen you do it. Do it again, God. Speak peace into our storms. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.